Welcome to ATF Hydrographics and another edition of our bi-weekly video series called Just the Tip, where we cut out all the boring stuff and just give you guys at home great tips and tricks for how you can become a better DIY Hydro Dipper. In today's video, we're going to be talking about prep work and everything that you need to know to be able to successfully prep something so that you can Hydro Dip it at home. Stick around, I'll tell you all about it. Today's video is brought to you in part by One Hit Wonder Paint Company. If you're shopping for your first hydro dipping kit, something that you want to do at home, or you have a kit already and you're just frustrated because it's not working correctly, you need to step up to the paint that we use right here at ATF Hydrographics, which is OHW. One Hit Wonder, or OHW for short, has an awesome do-it-yourself dip kit that they have put together that you can buy right on their website. Their paints are amazing. We use them all the time. They stick to everything you could think of. Bone, glass, metal, aluminum, plastic. It works great. And the best part is, there's no primer needed, ever. If you'd like to get your hands on one of their dip kits or any of their other really cool products, make sure you stick around all the way to the end of the video because I'm gonna tell you how you can get your hands on some with a discount. And who doesn't like saving money? That's awesome. So prep work, oh my God, we get this question all the time. What do I do for prep? How do I prep? Blah, 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 blah. We get all these questions about prep work and we're gonna cover them all right here in this video. So here what we gonna do. We're going to start out, I'm going to give you guys a bunch of tips and tricks on how you can make sure your prep work is spot on every single time right at home with just a few simple materials. But first, I'm going to take you to the shop. I'm going to show you how we do prep work on a professional level. So just in case you guys decide you want to do this later on down the road, you will kind of have an idea of what you're doing before you get started. First and foremost, you are going to need gloves. Yes, gloves are super, super important. If you go back and watch all my videos, you will see me wearing gloves through almost every single step in the hydro dipping process. The only exception to that is when I am actually hydro dipping, I always make sure that I wash my hands with Dawn degreasing dishwashing liquid before I touch anything. But all the rest of the times, I am wearing gloves. Now the type of glove you get does not matter. You can buy these cheap Harbor Freight ones. I use them for a very long time. They work really, really well. Anything nitrile, latex, whatever you want, just as long as it's not a powdered glove. But your hands and your booger hooks have some nasty stuff on them, including oils that will get into your parts and will stay there if you do not stop touching it with your bare hands. Don't touch it with your bare hands. Wear gloves. Not that hard. So once you've got your gloves on, the very first thing you're going to need to do is clean your part. Now here in our shop, we do a lot of firearms. So most of our cleaning equipment is based around cleaning of guns, which have oil and gunpowder residue and dirt and all kinds of junk in them. They're usually pretty nasty because no one ever brings me a clean gun. And if they do bring me a clean gun, it's usually coated from top to bottom in gun oil, which all of that stuff has to come off before we start dipping. Nine times out of 10, the very first thing I do with everything except plastic is it goes straight into this tank right here, which is full of acetone. Acetone is a great degreaser. You can leave metal parts in there for hours, days, however long you need to get all of the grease out. Now for non-firearm stuff that we get in or stuff that won't fit in this tank, what I'll use is this little squirt bottle and it's full of naphtha. Naphtha is a great degreaser, but it's really, really quick drying. So if you have a part, you spray a small little area of it, wipe it off, get it all degreased real good, and move on to the next area. If you spray this over a really large area, it most of it will evaporate before you get a chance to really get over there and get it wiped off good. Only downside to this is we go through a lot of paper towels and stuff wiping this stuff off because this does degrease really, really well on the surface. And every time you wipe, it comes off on a paper towel. And if you just continue wiping, you'll just be smearing that stuff around. So you gotta go through a lot of paper towels, but naphtha is a really, really good degreaser. So once all of our parts are clean, our next step is going to be to prep the surface so that the paint will adhere to it. And for that, we use a sandblaster. But before we can sandblast, we have to tape off any parts that I don't want to get sandblasted. So people send me a lot of different stuff and they want parts of it hydro dipped and parts of it not hydro dipped. Well, I have to protect the parts that they don't want dipped from being blasted. So for that, I use tape. My preferred brand is Frog Tape. I like the green tapes. Just from using so many tapes over the years, this is the one that I have found holds up to sandblasting the best and sticks really well. And it works really, really good as a painter's tape and holds up well to actual hydro dipping in the tank. So that's the brand that I use, just in case you're wondering, is green frog tape. So our sandblaster is a scat blast made by TP Tools. This is the 985 model. It is a little over six foot wide. 
It's really tall, so it fits big rims. All of our firearm parts, we've never had anything that I couldn't fit in this blaster. And the funny thing about our sand blaster is it doesn't use sand at all. So over the years, I've stuck with two blasting materials that I found work really, really well for my application. The first one's gonna be aluminum oxide, and the other one is red garnet. Now, there are a lot of other types of blast media out there that are not appropriate for our application. What we're trying to do with hydro dipping is we're trying to create a surface that is smooth, but also has enough texture to it so that the paint has something to mechanically bond to the surface of whatever it is that we're trying to hydro dip. So sand is not a good choice. Neither is corn cob media or like walnut shells. Those are way too soft. And probably the most common one that you'll see is glass beads. Glass beads do not leave the appropriate surface. They basically just kind of put little bitty dimples in the surface and they don't leave a really good rough etched profile for the paint to stick to. Leave the glass beads for parts cleanup. It works great for removing rust. Not so good for prep work for hydro dipping. Now, once we get done sandblasting, the very first thing I do is I get some air and just blow everything off real quick. I use really high pressure air. It's about 110, 120 PSI. That helps get down in all those little crevices and get all the sandblasting dust out so I don't have to worry about it being stuck to my part. Now, anything that was previously taped before it went into the sandblaster, I will take that tape off blow it off really good, and then retape it before I start painting. Sandblasting does have a tendency to blow little bits and pieces underneath any pieces of tape that are not stuck down all the way. So what will happen is the sandblasting dust will get stuck to the back side of the tape, and then when you go to dip, that stuff will come off, and it'll be all over your part, and then when you go to clear coat, you'll see little bits and pieces of sandblast material, and it just drives me nuts. So I usually just make sure I untape everything, blow it off really good, and then retape it again. So that is how we prep things here in our shop. Now, one thing I want you to remember is that cleaning and degreasing comes first always. Nothing goes into this very, very expensive sandblaster with very, very expensive sandblast media if it is dirty. What will happen is if you get dirt and oil and grease and grime into this thing, every time you sandblast, you will be sandblasting dirt, oil, grease, and grime right back into your part. If you have a sandblaster at home or you decide to get one for doing hydro dipping, make sure that you don't put anything in there that is dirty or greasy. So now let's talk about what you guys can do at home for your DIY hydro dipping projects. So the easiest and quickest method that you can do at home is with this a red scotch Sprite pad, some hot water, and Dawn dishwashing liquid. This stuff does really, really well at degreasing, and this will prep most of your surfaces very well. Now, if you go with a green scotch Sprite pad or like sandpaper or something like that, you run the risk of putting deep sanding scratches in whatever it is that you're trying to prep, and you will be able to see those sanding marks underneath your paint, and you do not want that. So get you the hottest water that you can stand to touch, put on your gloves, get you some Dawn dishwashing liquid and a red or gray Scotch Sprite pad and scrub your part really, really good. It handles two things in one. It cleans it and it preps the surface. And all you gotta do is rinse it off, let it dry, and you're ready to get started painting. Now, if you've got really dirty, greasy, nasty parts that need to be cleaned, your best bet is to get you a five gallon bucket, fill it up full of simple green and hot water and just let it sit, scrub your part a few times, dump it out, rinse it, and then put more simple green in it and let it soak overnight. This will ensure that you get all of those deep down greases and oils out of your stuff before you try to prep it. Now things like isopropyl alcohol and this stuff, denatured alcohol, are okay for cleaning, but they're not the best at degreasing. Now sometimes it can be hard to get a hold of, but naphtha is one of my favorite degreasers and it's really easy to use at home. Just keep it in a squirt bottle and you can use it for general degreasing and cleaning purposes. Now if you can't find naphtha anywhere, let me show you a little secret. This stuff is white camp fuel which is mostly naphtha. It works really, really good for cleaning and degreasing if you need some in a pinch. But if you can get pure naphtha, that's even better. So unless you're having to fix something with like Bondo or fiberglass resin or something like that, you want to stay away from sandpaper. The issue with sandpaper is, is most people just get frustrated with sanding and they don't sand out all of the sanding marks up to a high enough grit to leave a nice smooth finish, but still have enough surface for the paint to bite into. If you do have to use sandpaper for some reason, I really recommend not just use a scotch Sprite pad it's a lot easier but if you do have to use sandpaper you want to sand up to at least 400 grit but no higher than 800 grit so somewhere between that 400 and 800 mark is perfect for getting paint to bite into but still having a nice smooth surface prepping for paint is also a place where you want to avoid the use of power tools you don't need a random orbital sander a palm sander one of those little die grinders none of that kind of stuff i know everybody loves their dremel tool i love mine too but don't Try to use your Dremel tool to speed up paint prep. It, it is what it is. It's boring, it sucks, you just have to do it. Make sure your part's clean, and then prep it with a Scotch Sprite pad. You'll be good to go. 
Another question that we get asked all the time is, should you remove the existing coating on whatever it is that you're going to dip before you paint it? It really just depends on how good that coating is actually stuck onto the part and if it's in good shape. We're going to go into a lot more detail about this in another video, but just the basics is if the coating or paint or whatever it is that's on your part that you want to dip is in good shape and you trust it to hold up, then all you need to do is scuff and paint right over the top of it. If it's questionable or you're not really sure or it's in bad shape, then your best bet is to have it sandblasted first. If you don't have a sandblaster at home, just take it to a shop that has a sandblaster and pay them to do it. It will save you a ton of headache later on down the road. Trust me, that's why we have a sandblaster. Oh. So the only thing I didn't cover in great detail in today's video is identifying plastics. There is one step that you have to do to certain kinds of plastics, and that is flame treating in order to get them prepped properly. So that is a whole other process that we're going to talk about in a future Just a Tip video. But I do have a video that I'll link to right up here that goes into detail about how you can identify plastics and whether they need to be flame treated or not. So if you want to get your hands on one of the really cool One Hit Wonder Hydro Dipping Kits so you can do it yourself at home, check out the link below in the description. I've got a link there that you can use. and I'm I've got a coupon code that you can get $5 off your order at One Hit Wonder. Just use that link down in the description box below and that coupon code. You'll save yourself five bucks and you'll have enough money for a Subway sandwich. Like, I think a whole foot long is still five bucks, isn't it? it? Yeah, I think it is. I'm pretty sure it is. So I hope that you learned something today and enjoyed today's video. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like what you saw today. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Let's roll the bloopers. In today's video, we're going to be talking about... Um, we're going to be talking about, um, I hate it when I say, um, ah. Oh my God. Y'all had all day to call me and you wait until I start filming a video to call. So that it's the, uh, the, uh, 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 why, why do I have to say, uh, so much? We'll have something to mechanically, oh my God, there's the phone again. That's like twice in five minutes. On one of their dip kits, or money, or many, 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 many. You have to have gloves in order to do this pro uh, appropriately. Do this appropriately. If you're not wearing gloves, you're not doing it appropriately. What the? What is wrong with me today? And then I'm going to take you guys step by step through, um, through Never Neverland. We're going to go step by step through Never Never. Oh my God. So first and firm, for, foremost, firm, foremost, not firm. This is not going well. Why is the compressor running? I'm, I'm not even dipping anything right now. Turn off compressor. So let's start out with the most important thing, which is going to be step number A. Step number A. Did I really just say that? Oh. My God, I'm a retard. Everybody's used to, and and and, and I, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. So if you want to get your hands on one of the um the things, these this stuff, one hit wonder. Oh my God, my brain is like fried today. Different prep process for if you're doing certain plastics versus other um, versus versus uh, the plastics. The uh, plastic is plastic, and yes, squirrel. <laughs>